ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. It is Tuesday, January 23rd. Your drive begins now here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. We've got a fun show for you coming up at about 5.15. We're going to hear from Dave Cohen. He's the play-by-play voice of Georgia State. Georgia State's in town for basketball. That's coming up tomorrow at the Cam Henderson Center. We've got that for you right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. And I've got tickets for you as well. Have you got your tickets yet? Well, if you don't, I've got you taken care of. i got a four-pack I'm going to give you a little bit later on. Easiest way to do that is be a part of our text line. Our texter of the day always wins. And the text line is 304-396-TALK. 304-396-8255. Also, I was over at Marshall earlier today grabbing some audio. We knew it for a few weeks, but it was formal today. Rafa Samoez, he's now officially the new head coach of Marshall Women's Soccer. Had a chance to catch up with him. His presser was earlier today. You can watch that on YouTube. There was a breakaway session afterwards. I was more interested in that, so we've got that. You won't find that on YouTube, only right here. We've got it here later on. Also caught up with Marshall's goalkeeper, Alexis Wogelmuth. So she's on the show as well. So we'll hear from them later on as Marshall making the change, the women's position. The theme pretty much was unified and looking at the success the men have had there's that push now to unify what the men and women are doing have a martial soccer program not have a martial men's program and a martial women's program so that seemed to be the push earlier today in the introductory press conference so we'll get to all of that and i've got a bone to pick with the Sun Belt. now today Sun Belt player of the week was ulm's dasha nunu bradford Now, she had a pretty good weekend, pretty good weekend, but Abby Beeman should have been player of the week in the Sun Belt. I know that's a little bias on my part. I get it. I understand it. She should have been the player of the week in the league. She had a triple-double, not a double-double, but she had a triple-double. She also scored double digits in both games last week, and honestly, I think the Sun Belt missed the boat on that one, and we'll talk more about that later. And the reason why I think that they missed the boat on that, one, is you look at the performance that Abby had, and two, by the way, it's a bad look for the league now. Abby netted a national award earlier today as well, and I just think the Sun Belt messed up big time today in this. They absolutely messed up. I couldn't believe it when I saw that. Now, you might say I'm a little biased, and of course I am a little biased. Aren't we all? But you look at the performances and you think, okay, Abby Beeman had a triple-double. She was in double digits both nights, Marshall won, and she had a triple-double. And she's one of the top rebounders in the league. She's probably one of the top players in the league night in and night out. And I thought that was a bad look for Sunbelt. That's some Conference USA level stuff right there. I'm not ashamed to say it. I expected better out of this league. And I saw that today, and I was very disappointed in the outcome. Now, Abby Beeman's not the type of player. She's not sitting there right now worried that she's not the Sun Belt Conference Player of the Week. That's not her. She's not wired that way. I get it. Some players are. Some players aren't. No worries there. She's good. She's got hers. But I just thought that was terrible today. To see that, Sun Belt Player of the Week, and then – Abby Beeman's named the National Player of Week. It's not a good look when a national award honor comes to a player that can't even get the League Player of the Week honor. Now, there are five National Players of the Week. It's, you know, it's not just one. It's, it's a handful, and there's five on the women's side. And so I could get it if there was a tough decision, if there were a couple of players uh, in the Sun Belt that earned national honors. And, okay, you got to pick one. I get it. Can't, or you could have Co-Player of the Week. I get it. But I saw that today, and I thought, what do you got to do in this league to get a Player of the Week honor if a triple-double is not going to be good enough for you? Consistent double-double scorer this weekend, efficient shooter, very good rebounder, and you look at her and you think, how is she that good as a rebounder? Because she just goes out and gets it. So when I saw that today, that annoyed me. But I don't have a vote. That's fine. Sometimes... 
things happen. I'll just leave it at that. Sometimes things happen when it comes to these votes. So that annoyed me today. I saw that. But then we had some fun today because uh, I got a chance to go over and talk to Rafa. He's excited to be the next coach of the Marshall women's soccer team. Good opportunity for the herd to really try to elevate the program. There's a serious push to elevate all the programs. And so we'll see if that Chris Grassy coaching tree is going to pay off on the women's side, that unified approach to soccer. It's working for the men, so trying to recreate some of that magic for the women. All right, our text line this hour is going to be 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. We are going to talk about Marshall and the next opponent, Georgia State, with a gentleman that was on a few months ago with us. We had so much fun with him. I was grateful for the opportunity to bring him back. Dave Cohen, he's the play-by-play voice for Georgia State. He's in town now. We're going to talk to him when we continue, get you sort of a a different point of view of this matchup coming up tomorrow at the Henderson Center. Also, our text line is open, and that's your opportunity to win four tickets to go see the herd take on Georgia State. Text line 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. More coming up, including Dave Cohen, when we continue on this edition of The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Coming up tomorrow night, the Cam Henderson Center, the Thundering Herd in action, taking on Georgia State. Should be a fun one joining us on the program. We had so much fun with him last time that I was excited to be able to get him back on. He used to play by play voice for Georgia State, Dave Cohen. Dave, thanks for joining me. Uh, I know where you're at exactly right now. You're at the Cam Henderson Center as uh, your squad is practicing, getting used to the arena. Uh, you were telling me off air that uh, you, you actually liked the Cam Henderson Center. It was kind of an interesting place when you got in there. Yeah, I do. We're here practicing right now, getting ready for tomorrow night. And I'm working, uh, you know, just sitting here working on my game sheet. But, you know, whereas Georgia State for years needed a new arena, and we finally built what is now known as the GSU Convocation Center uh, just up the street from what was Turner Field, which is now our football stadium, Center Park Stadium. Uh, I like when, when, you know, when we go on the road, I like to, you know, see these arenas. I've been here before. Uh, but I like the arenas that are vintage, what I'll call late 70s, early 80s. It looks cool from the outside, pretty cool here on the inside. I know when we were here a year ago, they had a great crowd, so great atmosphere, uh, especially for, you know, it's tough atmosphere for visiting teams to play in unless they thrive playing in that kind of environment. So that's kind of what I'm, what I'm expecting tomorrow night. And uh, just, you know, glad to be back here in Huntington and take on the Marshall Thundering Herd uh, coming up tomorrow night. Let's talk about the last few games for Georgia State. Good start so far to the season. Everybody right now, with the exception of a few teams in this league, are having good to great starts. And Georgia State, one of them, had some issues with Georgia Southern. But all in all, this should be a competitive matchup. You know, when you look at Marshall, when you compare Marshall to Georgia State, you know what do you see? What looks the same? What looks different to you? Well, the one name that uh, obviously jumps off the sheet is uh, the uh, the Enokili Killing Kid, uh, who in 17 starts this year, as, as your fans know, is averaging almost 17.6 rebounds. I remember him from a year ago. Uh, also a defensive presence on that end of the floor. He's got 24 blocks, and he's got 17 steals. Not to just rattle off stats, but those are the things that kind of jump off the uh, page at me when we talk about getting ready for the thundering herd they look a little different obviously than they did a year ago that was a really good marshall team that came in for its first run through the Sun Belt in men's basketball and getting back to georgia state you know we ended up playing georgia southern on back-to-back saturdays so last week we played them in atlanta and we run them out of the convocation center 90 to 62 and as they say in all rivalry games paul throw out the records none of it matters so we go up the mountain to Boone this past week, and we lose to the Appalachian State Mountaineers, 76-68. They had 17 offensive rebounds. Um, you know, I think right now, obviously, Appalachian State, James Madison, the two best teams in the Sun Belt Conference, 
uh, you know, based on what I've seen so far. And I haven't seen James Madison in person, but now I have seen Appalachian State. They've got some of the best big low post players that I've seen so far in the Sun Belt. I think Southern Miss is a dark horse as well, having seen them when we were out there. But anyway, we come down the mountain and we head down to Statesboro. And I think everybody felt pretty good about that ball game. We watched a little bit of their game over Coastal Carolina. They played on, on Thursday night. And we, we came into town on Thursday night after playing Wednesday in Boone. And we don't have to play till Saturday. Um, you know, I can't speak for anybody, but I think a lot of folks kind of thought it might be somewhat of a replay of the previous Saturday. Again, the, the game in Atlanta. Well, you know, they came out and hit 17 three-point shots, and they ended up beating us. And we, we Georgia State, did, just did not play a good game at all. I mean, you know, obviously you can tell from a defensive standpoint when you allow 17 threes, you're giving up, you know, long-range open shots. And defensively, it just wasn't there. So they came back to Atlanta and turn around again, keep the bags packed. And we've got a Wednesday-Saturday trip this week. We're in the middle of that four-consecutive road game trip. We've got Marshall coming up tomorrow night. And then uh, we actually go back to Atlanta, turn around and fly to Myrtle Beach. we got Coastal Carolina on Saturday. But this is a big one, and it's a big one for Georgia State to bounce back from what was a disappointing loss in Statesboro. How do you feel about this four-game schedule? The Herd starting a four-game homestand. You're in the middle of a four-game road trip. Yeah, You've been through this now. How do you feel? Is this really fair to teams? I know there's that advantage if you're at home for four, but a team like Georgia State on the road for four doesn't seem fair. Well, it is what it is, is what the coaches will tell you. Uh, I think it's tough on the student-athletes, if you still want to call them student-athletes. Uh, our guys, you know, when you leave on a Tuesday back to back week and you don't come back until late Saturday night, uh, if you do the math, that means your, your kids, your, your players haven't been in class, but Monday one week and Monday the next. So I'm not sure what Marshall does, but we do travel with an academic person and she is on every road trip, making sure that these players stay on track with regards to the academics. But, uh, as far as being on the road, uh, four consecutive games. I don't. I can't remember that we've done that since we've been in the Sun Belt. It, it, it's a little bit of wear and tear, um, but obviously it's better if you're winning. And had they beaten Georgia Southern on Saturday, like a lot of us thought that we would, uh, the outlook or the, uh, the thought process behind it might be a little bit altered from what it is. But playing on the road is never easy, as you know. I guess the one thing that uh, Georgia State has to its advantage, if you want to call it that, is just being in Atlanta and being able to head down to the airport 20 minutes and pretty much fly anywhere in the world. So from a travel standpoint, getting in and out of Atlanta is a little easier. I know some teams, uh, depending on the size market they're in, it, it affects their travel, the ease of the travel. Uh, for the most part, Georgia State doesn't face that week in and week out or whenever we're on the road. So from a travel standpoint, a weariness standpoint, I guess we've got it probably as easy or almost as easy as anybody in the Sun Belt. My guest is Dave Cohen. He's the voice of Georgia State. Tell me a little bit more about Lucas Taylor. He's having a pretty good season. Is he the, the main threat on this team, or is he the one that gets all the attention? Well, I think Georgia State's like a lot of teams in Division One college basketball. The transfer portal has, uh, has really played a role in – head coach Jonas Hayes' attempt to rebuild the roster. I'm not sure if we talked about this last year, but when, when Coach Hayes gets hired, it's right after Rob Lanier leaves Georgia State to take the job at SMU, and the core group of that uh, NCAA tournament team in his third and final season, those guys scattered, and for the most part, they were all out of eligibility. It was right after COVID. They had utilized their extra year based on the COVID virus, and so by the time Jonas Hayes takes the job, the cupboard's kind of bare. And he was able to bring with him at the last minute DeWan Odom from Xavier, Brendan Tucker from the College of Charleston, and he also brought in Jermaine Mann, who had transferred from Vanderbilt. All Atlanta-area kids wanting to come back and play in Atlanta, and they wanted to play for Jonas. So they struggled a year ago, uh, finishing 10-21 and 21 with uh, – Again, a roster that was in the process of being rebuilt from an NCAA tournament team. Well, then you go into the off season, this past off season, and now you're talking in, you're talking about bringing in a lot more transfers. Lucas Taylor transfers from Wake Forest. Tanari Lane transfers from Winthrop. Jaden Turner 
who led the Atlantic Sun in rebounding at Queens College in Charlotte. They're a new Division One school. He transfers in. Leslie and Carrie Woman, another Atlanta kid out of Lawrenceville, Georgia, transfers back from Longwood University. And they brought in a, a couple of high school kids and JUCO kids as well. But again, he's trying to rebuild the roster uh, via the transfer portal. Lucas Taylor right now leading Georgia State in the scoring category at about 14 points a game. Good long-range shooter, but can also get to the rim when he needs to. Tanari Lane is another scorer, the transfer from Winthrop. Another Atlanta area kid that transferred back, and he's averaging about 13, 14 points a game. And he is your quintessential catch-and-shoot three-point marksman when he's on. Uh, he, he is not one, I mean, about 90% of the time, he's going to look for a long-range shot. The other 10%, he can take it into the paint and get to the rim. Uh, Dewan Odom, since getting back into the starting lineup, is kind of your drive and dish. Not as much of a threat from the perimeter, but a drive and dish guy. But he can get to the rim pretty much whenever he wants to. And in the last two games, although he has not started, and he is the team captain, Brendan Tucker, the transfer from the College of Charleston, has been that spark off the bench uh, in, in the last two games at Appalachian State and at Georgia Southern. Granted, we lost both games, but Brendan was really uh, one of the, the few highlights in each of those games. Marshall taking on Georgia State coming up tomorrow at the Cam Henderson Center. Joining me on the program is the voice of Georgia State, Dave Cohen. When you look at Marshall, and we talked about Obina and Achille Kill, and he stands out, but Marshall is on a losing streak right now. What stands out to you, and what do you think Georgia State is going to have to do to maybe take advantage of Marshall and, and its recent struggles? That James Madison game, Marshall could not – buy a bucket that really wasn't an offensive showcase to begin with, but it's been really difficult as of late for Marshall with some really poor shooting. What does, um, what's kind of the scout for you right now? You know, what's coach saying about Marshall as he gets ready for this team? Well, you know, one thing that he uh, talks about a lot is playing on the defensive end with some intensity. Uh, again, our, our, the, the two issues in our two most recent games that I, I referenced earlier both involved the number 17. Uh, did not do a good job in the rebounding category at Appalachian State. Giving up, You can't give up 17 offensive rebounds. I don't know that Marshall has that same front court low post presence with the players that Appalachian State has, and I'm not sure if you've seen them yet, but I think they've got the best post game uh, of any team in the Sun Belt that I've seen so far. Not sure, again, what James Madison brings. So one thing for Georgia State, a key to it, again, do not let Marshall get active on the offensive boards. Uh, the bigs, just to give you a, a, a numbers comparison, they scored 76 points against us at Appalachian State. 41 of those 76 came from the four what I'll call post players. Uh, we just could not match up with them uh, very well at all. And then, again, you get down to Georgia Southern, and you can't take anyone lightly. Three-game losing streak, three-game winning streak for Marshall. We're still playing here in the Cam Henderson Center. I'm expecting it to be a pretty decent crowd. And they're playing with a sense of urgency right now, as, as Georgia State is. Both teams are 4-3 and three in Sunbelt Conference play. We're 9-8. and eight. Marshall's 9-11. and 11. Uh, I'm not saying we're going to catch the, the James Madisons and the Appalachian States, but uh, if you want to stay in the race in the Sun Belt Conference, this game tomorrow night for us, uh, as well as uh, Marshall, is a big ball game, as, as is our game Saturday following up at Coastal Carolina. But for me, keeping Marshall off the offensive boards and not giving Marshall wide open looks on their three-point shots are, are two of the biggest keys because those are the two things that, from a Georgia State standpoint, we've had problems with in our last two, three ball games. Dave Cohen's with me. He's in his 41st season as the play-by-play -play voice of the Panthers. It feels like it's gone by so quickly, hasn't it, Dave? Well, you know, I like to kid around. If I was, I, I might, I, I might be somewhere else if I was good enough to go somewhere else. But uh, you know, I'm a Georgia State alum. I got there in 1982 uh, and have just ultimately never left. Even while I was working radio full time in Atlanta. I uh, was still involved in the Georgia State broadcast, both basketball, baseball, and of course, now we've added football for the last 14 years, and 
you know, I ended up meeting my wife at Georgia State. It just turned into one of those situations where 10 years turns into 15 years, turns into 20 years, then it's 25. And it just uh, it goes on and on. And Georgia State's been a great experience for me. Like I tell people as well, uh, it's not just the job because I am a Georgia State alum. I've kind of grown up with the program. I've seen it from where it was when I got there in 1981-82 uh, to where it is today. And it's grown by major, major leaps and bounds uh, to solidify its place in a very, very crowded Atlanta sports market. But uh, it's been great to be a part of it all these years. And I'm looking forward to hopefully a few more years running around with football, basketball, and baseball. Another 40 at least, right? Another 40. Well, I don't know about that, but, uh, you know, I'm, I haven't really put a timeline on it. I talked to John Cox a little bit, the longtime voice out at Southern Miss. I think he's at 45 or 46 years, and he's still grinding. And uh, you gotta, you got to enjoy the grind. you got to enjoy getting up, getting on that airplane, flying into Charleston, West Virginia, bussing over to Huntington, and getting ready to do a ball game. And you got, you know, you got to enjoy being on the road and being a part of a – basketball team or a football team you know in the way the radio guys are and you know so far for for most of my 41 years i've enjoyed it some of those early years when georgia state basketball wasn't winning uh it was fun because it was new but after a while it got to be a little bit of a grind but over the years things have changed and it's gotten a lot better and i've, I've enjoyed it for the most part Georgia State radio voice Dave Cohen in his 41st season as the voice of the Panthers. Joining me on the program right now at the Cam Henderson Center later on tonight. I'm sure you'll be hitting the finer cuisine of Huntington. I know you've got that all plotted out, right? We're in radio. That's what we do. That's what we do. We go to practice and then we worry about where we're going to be having our post-practice meal. But for the most part, uh, you know, I just stay with the team, and wherever they go is where I'll, well, I'll end up. I'm sure we'll be somewhere in the downtown Huntington area. I'm looking forward to it. And I just want to give you a shout-out for folks that maybe want to find out a little bit more about the Panthers, kind of get a, an, an early scout of the game tomorrow from the Panthers' point of view. Yeah, I haven't listened to it yet. I'm going to afterwards. You've got a podcast. It is Panther Insider. And every week you sit down with the coach and you talk about Panthers basketball. So I know your preview of the Marshall game is part of that, and you can find that on the Georgia State Athletic website. But, yeah, I've been listening to that for a couple of weeks now, and uh, that's that's a fun podcast. It sounds like you're having a blast. Well, yeah, we do it on a weekly basis. Uh, it's kind of our weekly coaches show with social media uh, being what it is now. Uh, you know, Coach Hayes is great to work with. I'll say that up front. And uh, the, the podcast dash insider, uh, Georgia State insider basketball, it's fun to do. It, it's more fun to talk about it, obviously, when you're putting back, when you're putting wins into the win column. It can be a little bit tougher to do when you're not winning, but, you know, I enjoy it. Uh, I hope the folks that listen to it enjoy it. Luckily, Coach Hayes is great to work with, win or lose. Uh, so, yeah, we do this during basketball season. Uh, it, 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 it takes on different different subjects as we move along throughout the year but right now we're obviously knee deep in men's basketball and uh so yeah it's it's been fun doing it coach Hayes is great to work with each week too it's been fun to listen to as uh, you know I was uh, discover I just discovered it a few weeks ago I was I was pulling some game notes down and yeah, I gave it a, a couple of listens and thought, hey, this is great, and I hope that more play-by-play guys can maybe take advantage of this as well because it kind of feels like it's informative it's 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 laid back a little bit and it's not maybe sometimes restrained by just trying to get everything in in a uh, a certain time frame so it, it really sounded great Dave I just want to tell you that I'd rather really enjoyed listening to it the last few weeks and of course uh, I'll be listening for the uh, the recap of next week as well to hear what you said about Marshall yeah well I appreciate you tuning into that you know I try to keep it uh for for most weeks in and around 25 to 30 minutes uh especially you know if you're coming off a week where you've got two losses uh sometimes it can be hard to go 30 minutes and and try to turn negatives into positives but uh you know i think most people's listening habits i know some podcasts can run up to an hour hour and a half and i i don't know unless unless i'm on a bus trip going somewhere it's it's hard for me during my my work day to sit down and listen to let's say 60 or 90 minutes so i try to keep it for these for these inside Georgia State basketball part uh, 
part of the Panther Insider podcast. I try to keep them in that 25 to 30, 35 minute range so that people can listen to it, but not take up half their day trying to learn more about Georgia State basketball. Dave, it's good catching up with you. We had so much fun last time. I'm glad we got a chance to do this again. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening in Huntington. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow at the Cam Henderson Center. And hopefully this is going to be a fun one for both Georgia State fans and for Marshall. I appreciate you having me on. And, uh, you know, quick reminder, we'll be back up here by the time we get to college football season. And I know that countdown will be getting underway shortly for some of the fans. But I think Georgia State's back up here this year uh, playing – the thundering herd here in Huntington. I think football counted down the minute that the, the regular season ended and the bowl game ended. The countdown began, if not sooner. Yeah, sometimes I wish the fans would just let us enjoy the sports that are being played at this time without having a 257-day countdown from when the next college football game is. You know, the transfer portal has kind of made that impossible now. Well, I know. Yeah, everybody's in the same boat. I mean, While I'm trying to enjoy the National Football League and a little bit of NBA and college basketball, we're still having to focus some on the transfer portal and who's leaving Georgia State and and who's coming into Georgia State from what school. So I think it's going to be this way moving forward every season. Well, we got basketball to enjoy tomorrow. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, and uh, we'll catch up, and hopefully it's a fun one for both fans. And, should be It should be. This one looks like it's going to match up quite nicely. I'm excited for this one. Uh, this is one you circle because uh, I think Marshall and Georgia State are becoming a, – a, it's a really good ma- it's a matchup. It's a good rivalry. Yeah, it's – it's. I didn't know if Georgia State would be that type of school that would really be something that would make sense with Marshall, and so far it's made sense. Yeah, well, again, we are a little bit in a rebuilding mode uh, with the coaching change last year. It's going to take him probably another season to, to increase the talent level, uh, whether it be through high school, junior college, or the transfer portal. But definitely a lot of progress made from a year ago, a 10-21 and 21 team, to the team that comes in to face Marshall tomorrow. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Thanks, Dave. We appreciate you doing this again. All right, Paul. Thank you. I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow night. Looking forward to it as well. Dave Cohen, his 41st season as the play-by-play voice of the Panthers. Marshall taking on Georgia State coming up tomorrow. 7 o'clock tip. We go on the air at 6 o'clock right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. We'll talk a little bit more about Marshall soccer. There was an event earlier today at the Shuey Building at the Multipurpose Room to introduce the new head coach of the Marshall Women's Soccer Program. And we'll get your text in. We've got four tickets to tomorrow night's game between Marshall and Georgia State. Our text line this hour, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. More coming up on today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We continue on with today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. You can find me on social media anytime. You can't tune into the show. We post podcasts, updates on what we're doing. I'm on X. It's formerly known as Twitter, at Paul Swan. You can also find us on Facebook. Look for The Drive with Paul Swan. So earlier today, Abby Beeman was named USBWA National Player of the Week and honoree. She is only one of five players in the NCAA with multiple triple doubles this season. So she earned a nod as one of the five Ann Myers Drysdale National Player of the Week honorees. And that is, of course, as I mentioned, from the U.S. Basketball Writers Association. What a tremendous, seriously, what a tremendous week for her. She had her second triple-double of the season with 15 points, 11 rebounds, and 11 assists. So, again, just the fifth player with multiple triple-doubles this season. And she is the first Marshall women's basketball player in history to do that as well. And then what she do after that? Well, 22-point effort. She also eclipsed, I didn't mention that earlier, she also eclipsed the 2,000-point mark for her career. And she had seven assists and five steals. For the week, 18.5 points, nine assists, seven and a half rebounds, and 4.5 steals. 
and Marshall still undefeated in Sunbelt play. So she gets a national honor, but ULM and their player, Yasha Bradford, is named Sunbelt Women's Basketball Player of the Week. And no disrespect to Bradford. I'm sure she's a tremendous player. But I'm sorry. I think the Sunbelt media got it wrong. I I guess it's the Sunbelt media. Whoever votes on this, collectively, they got it wrong. Beeman definitely should have been the player of the week in the Sun Belt, but she's also, I'm sure, not concerned about such little trivial things like that, and she was named National Player of the Week. So that's a good look for her. It kind of makes the Sun Belt look bad that here's the Sun Belt Player of the Week, but Marshall... And the performance from Abby Beeman was good enough to get a national weekly honor. So not a good look there. What was a good look earlier today was Marshall University officially presenting Rafa Samoez as the new women's soccer coach. Now, they streamed the event earlier today. We're not going to rehash that, but there was a breakout session, so we had a chance to catch up with Rafa, talk to him just for a few minutes. And he was confident. One of the things that was asked about him, was he confident? Was he ready to go? Did he think that he has what he needs at Marshall to make this successful? Um, There's no doubt. I feel when we were at Charleston, we had 47 different countries, and I was able to establish the networking with those companies. Um, I believe it takes time. If you remember, Chris Grassi, his first two years were more losses than wins here, and I was in the second year. But on his third year, when he has his first fully recruited class and the coach implemented, is when he won his first conference, and the fourth year was when he win, won the national championship. So I believe these first two years will be more about culture and implement the philosophy and the core values and how we play and have the players to buy it. And I think by year three is when we should reach potential or peak of what we can do. But um, I'm really excited with these first two years because it feels a lot of recruiting, there's a lot of the players buying in. Um, as of right now, I just find out we have no goalies. So I have these 20 coaches trying to schedule games and we have no goalies. So I asked the coaches, give me a week to see if I open a trial for a walk-on or or if one of the players want to jump and go. And, but I'm going to ask the players, do you want to play or not? But this little challenge for coming now, I feel I need time to figure out and evaluate the players. But I believe by year three, we should be seeing a team that is coached by Rafa Simões with my signature on it. Great question. What's your staff going to look like? I know you've already made one hire. And uh, go into a little detail on that, if you would. Um, first hire, uh, Coach Ross Holland. He was 200 miles at WVU. So, he played with me in college. We coached together um, women's soccer before. I think it's a tremendous hire because he's so qualified on the field. He was a player, he played for Sunderland. He coached a WVU that just went to the Final Four. So he's a man of my trust and that's why I wanted him to associate. And I think if I'm going for a meeting or if I'm going recruiting, I know he'll be getting the player sharp. So he's a fundamental piece to bring my vision to life. Um, and about the others, sorry. The assistant coach right now, we've seen what we can do, but I already have somebody in mind. And the GA, as of right now, have 21 people applying, um, but I want somebody specific for goalkeeping. So it's been uh, better than I thought, to be honest, with the search. With the girls that you uh, that are already here, how has the reception been, at least early, that you're going to be, just like you said, crossing the hallway and, and taking over a program you know a lot about? Um, there's players like Bailey Fisher and Ava Traffrey that I had the pleasure to coach when I was in the academy. So I know them from before they've been in college. Um, I just arrived from my recruiting trip in South America, and our first official training and first meeting will be tomorrow. But I was already always watching, and I think there's a lot of potential really good players. And there's the incoming players that I have to jump on a call as well that uh, I didn't sign them, but they're already coming. So I think there's a lot of resources still, but these first two weeks we'll be evaluating them and understanding them better. So in terms of recruitment, so you've already traveled South America, but also with the transfer portal, how do you man- how do you plan on like, managing the team? Um, the transfer portal, we, you either hate or love it. And I feel I have a metric that I use that we've been using on the men's soccer teams be really successful that we want to bring it. There's a ways to kind of see players that we need in our own style. So we want to implement that. I still didn't have time to get to it. But internationally or nationally, 
I just want to have a diverse team that they respect each other. But it's not about where we're finding the players. It's if the players fit what we're trying to do because it's better for them and better for us. So we're going to recruit players from everywhere. But I, I really want to keep local talent because I feel that helps with the community. And I really like that we already have players like Bailey and Eva Trafway in the team. Coach, you've talked a lot about your relationship with Chris Grassi. What's maybe one of the biggest things that you've learned from him, both as a player and coaching with him? I feel first is how he puts the athlete as the center. So it's a very holistic uh, program where the center is the athlete, the student athlete, and they trust him and we trust them. And I think that was something that I created. And Chris has been a pioneer of me in how he plays. Is a style of play that attracts people that people want to see because it keeps the ball, scored a lot of goals. Last year his team had, I think, 70 goals. That was probably the record uh, for Marshallman soccer. So. What I learned with him is how to recruit. I think he's exceptional in finding the fit for the program, not being a good player or bad player, but how is they fit what we're trying to do. And secondly, how he deals with people. But um, he's a mentor to me. And like I said, I'm so glad that we have synergy with the programs that we want to create and have him one door away. Great question as well. We talked back in the fall. Um, Chris kind of threw me to you <laughs> when I was wanting to talk to him and uh, kind of said, you know, you might need to practice because you might be a head coach one day. Did you think the opportunity would come this soon? At the time, no, but um, it's funny, remember, and I remember that was probably one of my first interviews. I always been more uh, assistant coach likes to recruit and I'll be on the camera, so if there's something I have to learn. Um, but at the time, no, I was living a dream coaching for the men's side. Um, at the time, at that year, I was enjoying what I do with Chris and was like you're in the best program in the country and we're the best coaches, best players, so excited. But I think now is a different time and it was after a season. But uh, it's a good memory and I always remember you for that as well. We will hear from Alexis Wogelmuth. We'll get that when we continue. And of course, you're listening to The Drive at ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Our text line's still open. We're giving you a chance to win four tickets to go see the Herd take on Georgia State. That's coming up tomorrow. We've got the game here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. But if you don't have tickets and would like to go, our text line this hour, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Earlier today, I was over at Marshall for the official announcement, more like the introductory press conference that Rafa Samoez was presented today to the people in attendance as the new head coach of the Marshall women's soccer team. There were players that were there as well. We had a chance for a breakout session. You're not going to see this on YouTube. You're not going to hear this on YouTube as well. Alexis Wogelmuth. Keeper for the Thundering Herd. She spent about a minute or so with us talking about the hire, and that's what the first question was. Kind of wanted to know what her early impressions were. Uh, I'm very excited. Um, I think the future is going to be great, and I just can't wait to be around and see what happens. He gave you a little shout out there, so he, <laughs> that's got to make you feel good, right? Oh, no, definitely. You know, uh, it kind of, I would say it kind of makes it feel more real. You know, I mean, going pro is something obviously I would love to do, but to have the new head coach's support in doing that just kind of motivates me further, so to speak, moving forward. Is it a little more um, easy to take that he comes from this program? He knows, because you know the success the men have had. Is it a little more comfort for you guys knowing that? I believe so. I think just being able, you know, like I've seen him in passing, just walking through the locker room, you know, it, it's kind of like you have a general idea of, you know, what can happen. Look at the men's team, the success they have, the expectations they have for their program, you know. I think it's something I'm really excited to kind of integrate into us and hopefully we can achieve some of the same success. How much input did the, the players really have in this one? Um, it was mainly just the athletic department. So I think um, when everything initially happened, they asked us for a list of character traits and that we would want in a new coach, and they used those throughout the search. But besides that, it was mainly just the athletic department. And you heard Christian Spears earlier today, if you watched the live stream of the event, talk about how they sought input. They wanted to hear from the players, kind of get an idea of what they were looking for. So that's what she was alluding to as I asked her what that input was. So the changes are continuing at Marshall, trying to put together a staff now for the women's side, the assistant coaches. And the whole idea here is to build a program not just have a men's soccer program and a women's soccer program more of a consistent this is what 
martial soccer looks like. So you're going to have shared resources, shared analytics, training programs going to be very similar, I'm sure, tailored to the needs of each side. But you're going to have a lot of grouping of resources. You've got coaches that know the language, know the lingo. You can go next door, talk to a national championship coach in Chris Grassy, get his input. I'm sure that he will ask for feedback as well. They're trying to build a program here, and it's not a bad concept. I don't know if that would work for basketball. Could you imagine a men's and women's basketball program that share similar DNA traits, similar training structures, regiments, play style? Could you imagine the platooning style of Kim Caldwell being implemented for Marshall men's basketball. I don't think that's where we're going here, and that's not, I believe, what Christian Spears was talking about earlier today during his portion of the press conference, but that's something to think about. Could you imagine that style more toward what the men do? Platoon your players, just drive other teams crazy? I'd be interested to see it for sure. But we are going to see a good game tomorrow. Looking forward to it. Marshall in action, taking on Georgia State. It's a 7 o'clock tip. We'll have it for you starting at 6 right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. And our text line this hour, it's your opportunity to win tickets all this week and next to the games. We'll keep that open for a few more minutes, give you a few more opportunities to get your text in, and that's 304 396 talk 304 396 six eight two five five i look forward to seeing you all there tomorrow at the henderson center of course after that coming up on saturday and i'll have tickets starting tomorrow for that one it'll be marshall taking on southern miss and that's going to be a saturday and it's set for four o'clock it's one of those games where the time has changed so if your ticket says seven don't worry, it's going to be set for 4 o'clock, and you don't have to do anything. Just show up with your ticket, and you'll be all set. Looking forward to tomorrow, we're at the Henderson Center, so that means we usually have a few people stop by our table tomorrow at the Henderson Center, so I'm looking forward to that. I think Luke Creasy said he'd come by and talk to us a little bit. Earlier, we were speaking with the play-by-play voice of Georgia State, Dave Cohen. He might stop by. We've got... Hopefully, a lot of people checking in tomorrow at the table. It's always fun to get out of the studio and do the show and talk to people. And I look forward to talking to you as well. That's going to do it. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget, if you missed anything today on the show, you want to go back, listen to some of the interviews. You won't find those on YouTube or any place else. You go to our podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. Transmitting in Glorious FM on 94.1 W227BS Huntington. This is 930 WRVC Huntington, celebrating 100 years of broadcasting.